Welcome everyone to this week's video. Today we are on Fish Friday number 117 and we have a good one for you today. Today's fish is very popular in the aquarium world, similar to most of our fish, um, but there's a couple of misconceptions about this fish, but there is no denying that it has one of the most striking appearances of any fish, especially freshwater fish in the world. Today's fish that we're gonna be talking about is bam the jack dempsey cichlid now the jack dempsey cichlid or scientific name rocio octofasciata again that is rocio or rocio r-o-c-i-o octofasciata it is part of the family cichlidae which of course is the family of cichlids now you might be thinking jack dempsey i've heard that name before well, if you're a boxing fan, you probably have. Their name actually comes from an old boxer from the 1920s, a heavyweight boxing champion, um, William Harrison Jack Dempsey. And I should probably have shown you a picture of, there we go, of him. Um, but a world heavyweight boxing champion from the 1920s. Um, yes, so here we go. Um, that's where it got its name from. Apparently, there's some characteristics, but we'll get into that for a little bit. Um, in terms of where it is found, it is native to southern Mexico down to Honduras, um, but it's been introduced to many other places, sadly. Um, as is very common from the aquarium trade, these fish have just been introduced all over the place due to aquarium lease releases more than likely um, and it they have caused problems um, they are now found in Australia Thailand they are found in the US they're found in Florida and I've even seen there's apparently one population up in like South Dakota which is really odd to me um, there's even a bunch of populations and it's considered invasive in Russia um, seems to survive pretty well but in its native habitats it's found in these really slow moving waters um, think about like the swampiest waters the swampiest areas you can imagine and that's where this fish would like to be um, really swampy slow moving really murky water tons of vegetation mud and sand on the bottom um, that's what this fish likes to be in um, which is why it can also be found in canals and ditches. Um, you know, canals and ditches are notorious for having those exact same characteristics. Very slow moving water, lots of vegetation, especially in ditches grow there. Um, just mud and sand, I mean, it's a perfect storm for them. Um, it is a medium sized fish, but it's actually one of the larger cichlids that you can find. It's, you know, it's just medium. Um, they're about 20 to 28 centimeters, which is 8 to 11 inches. Apparently, some people say they get up to 12 inches, um, but that seems to be a little large. But I'm fairly confident that most of these fish are between 8 to 11, mature, obviously. In terms of their body shape, they look like a small bass. If you have experience in the aquarium trade, you understand that cichlid body shape. You got this real, um, I don't know, kind of cylindrical body. It's it's really it's it looks like a small bass. It's a small it's a cichlid. Um, the thing about it is it has this really like big lobe right here the, on the forehead, really thick, fleshy lips, lips, and a little bit more um, of a dorsal and anal fin than other cichlids and I just kind of that's how I look at it um, it's got you know it's got this really long dorsal fin this really long anal fin a very very rounded caudal fin um, and on the females the females actually have a, on the dorsal and anal fin they're a little more rounded um, on the dorsal and anal fin Males have these points right here. So this would be a male. 
Now there's another couple of characteristics. Apparently females don't get as spotted and females have um, a beard usually. Um, not as impressive as mine is, but um, they do actually have a beard. Usually, apparently, I'm not a Jack Dempsey Aquarius by any means. Um, these are not the fish that I enjoy putting in aquariums um, personally, but you do more power to you. But apparently the females have like a really light blue beard um, around them, so that's, don't look at that. Um, so that's a male as well. You can see there's a lot of people out there that are much more knowledgeable about that um, But I'm pretty confident that this one is a male now You saw this picture here. This is kind of that bulldog face that I was talking about um, they, they look a little gruff and they have these very sharp teeth you can see right here I included this picture because they have those really sharp teeth in there um, these things are highly predatory. These things will eat. I mean, they love eating meat and insects and everything. These are not, you know, plant eaters. They'll nibble on some plants and they'll nibble on some algae, especially if they're bored. Um, but these teeth are pretty there and it's fairly aggressive, which is why it was actually named after the Jack Dempsey. Apparently, whoever thought of it was like, oh, their face and their aggressive nature reminded them of Jack Dempsey the boxer so that's how it got his name I'm a little unclear on that one but I don't name fish so um, now talking about their color uh, I mentioned it earlier their color is striking oh my goodness it's such a beautiful fish and there's so many yeah I even look here because this is a like this is an example of secular form has a blue beard fewer body spangles and but I thought this was kind of pointed tips but they say no so that's why I was I was trying to figure out if I could find out but if you look on you know on the internet for Jack Dempsey you'll have so many different color variation variation I was trying to actually find so you got these this is um, coloration one of the most highly sought after actually but it goes you have all these this gold um, electric blue this one which looks probably more wild type. this one is beautiful this one has weird white stripes this is probably more what they look accurately like but it's they've got so many different colorations and they're all beautiful all beautiful and they change Coloration changes as the fish matures. Um, it has the light gray to tan, faint turquoise flecks, dark purple gray with very bright iridescent blue and green and gold flecks. That's, so these are kind of young and these are, you know, you're gonna have these bright, the older the fish gets, the more brighter it gets. Um, the electric blue right here is probably the most sought after for Aquarius. And in fact, most people would know this fish as the electric blue Jack Dempsey. Um, that's where most people are sought. Because it's one of the most sought after, it's actually one of the more common. This is a complete um, man-made color. This is not in the wild. Um, the reason why people say they look for this blue counterpart, they say it's less aggressive smaller in size but it's a little more delicate for the tank meaning that it can't handle fluctuations in water chemistry and things like that um, but apparently this this coloration right here is the most sought after um, in terms of cost five to fifteen dollars on average I mean they're fairly common enough that they don't they're not that hard to find. You could probably go to any pet store um, that sells fish and probably find these. These, you know, these are just fairly common. Um, they do extremely well in cichlid and predator tanks, which is why I'm not discouraging these. If you do get these, obviously, just don't release them in the wild because they can cause a problem. And they do, but they do very well in like cichlid tanks, predator tanks, um, just not in a full community tank. 
um, just make sure you give them some like uh, caves they love being in caves and they defend a cave really aggressively they're not gonna just go after and just try and pick on things but if th something comes to their cave they're going to get incredibly aggressive um, and if there's just if they're smaller fish they're gonna try and eat them I mean you saw those teeth it's it's a predator it's going to try and go after those small fish that's a food for it <laughs> now in terms of um, the interesting fact that we're gonna end the video on is actually that aggressive nature goes into their reproductive strategies as well this is one of the most aggressive breeders um, that I've really realistically know um, what happens whenever it becomes breeding season the male brightens up as fairly common in the fish world that's breeding colors are fairly brighter um, the male picks a female that it wants to mate with and then he charges a female and just basically knocks into her knocks into her knocks into her knocks into her and he will continue doing that saying hey look at me hey look at me hey look at me if she rejects the male then he just continues to charge her until she dies so if you have a male and a female in an aquarium and that female is not ready to breed but that male is like it is time you really have to separate those two fish because he will literally just continue beating her until she dies it's it's so aggressive um so please if you're trying to get these to spawn and one of them is unwilling get her out of there because he will continue they they get stuck they're very one track minded they get stuck on that girl they're done um then but let's say the female does enjoy it and they actually do spawn the female jack dempsey's actually lay their eggs on a flat surface um rocks and logs glass they love actually laying their uh, eggs on like the bottom of aquarium class uh, tile small pieces of tile work excessively well um, they love those and you can do that in their in their caves they'll really do that um, and as most cichlids they actually show a lot of parental care um, but these kind of take it to another extreme the both parents will actually incubate the eggs and guard the eggs once they hatch uh, protecting the fry um, and Jack Dempsey's are actually known to be super attentive parents incredibly defending their offspring but being kind of tender with their young um, this is one of the few examples and this will blow my mind and this is really why I want to talk to the, about the reproduction as the interesting fact in the video is that these fish actually pre chew food and then regurgitate it to feed their offspring kind of like you know how penguins and birds do basically these adults are grabbing some foods and kind of chomping it to bits and then just letting their young um, eat it like blowing it out there it's so incredibly bizarre that they do that to me it just it shows a level of parental care that is beyond what most people think fish would have which is just really bizarre to me really cool um hope you like that fact as well but anyways thank you guys so much again i really appreciate it hope see you again if i don't please be safe have a great day please leave a like comment and subscribe if you do i'd really appreciate it hope see you again love seeing the comments thank you guys so much for the love and support i would not do this without you once again take care of yourselves take care of your loved ones and peace